That here to give the next bears that same opportunity to forge around, use their senses, use their skills. That's our goal throughout the day here with the eight grizzlies that live here is with that rotation, giving them all that same chance to be as active as they'd like to be. But then the keepers left, made sure everything was secured behind them, which meant we could safely open up that gate, invite the next three bears on out, and that is who is out here right now. This is Bo, Seely, and Condi. Bo is the biggest of the three. Of the two who are kind of not facing us right now up in the rock area, he's off to the right. I believe this is Condi to the left, and then her sister Seely in the water. They're a little trickier to tell apart until I can see both of their faces. Um, but these, again, three bears are coming on out. They've been resting for a little while, and now it's time to go search for food, eat as much as they can or they'd like to, uh, maybe interact with each other. Whatever they choose to do out here is 100% up to them. Now, these three bears, like the rest of the bears that live here at the center, were removed from the wild due to conflicts with people. And for most of the bears, those conflicts involved food, getting access to unsecured uh, human food sources. That means a lot of different things because bears are omnivores. Um, pretty much anything that's edible, they'll give it a try. And normally that should mean that out in the wild, they're finding things like uh, grasses, flowers, roots, berries, carcasses, uh, rodent caches, nuts, bugs, all those different things out there um, are all normally things we expect a bear to eat in a place like Yellowstone. But uh, with their incredible sense of smell, that on a good day she upwards of 15 miles away, it's about seven times stronger than a hound dog's sense of smell. 
This attempts all their nose in the increment areas where they're smelling easy food out in places like a neighborhood or a campground, areas we normally would not expect to see bears in. Now, normally what draws them into those areas are things like garbage. Trash cans are definitely a big source of uh, food and smell to those bears. Uh, pet food left out, bird feeders hung up, uh, whether it's a seed and nut feeder or sugar water for hummingbirds. Um, it can be something like a, a silverware used to make a sandwich and left out on the picnic table. Um, even something as small as a toothbrush or deodorant and a toiletry kit left in your tent during the day while you're away on a hike. All those things have that food scent to them. And if a bear decides to head into that area, take that risk of heading into a legal area, if they are rewarded by that food, they will remember that holiday weekend he was seen getting access to many different things in that campground, including garbages. People had had pop-up hampers with, that they were using as a garbage uh, basket right outside their tent. There were coolers of drinks in the back of people's trucks. Um, he had started going through and toppling tents in search of food, luckily unoccupied tents. And then he did fall asleep on top of someone's car while they were also sleeping inside. Mm -hmm. So this is not things we'd normally expect a bear to do, but Bo, over those three days, was learning so much so fast um, and really changing his behavior, but by the time that he was trapped on Sunday of that weekend, they knew this had to be it. They knew that Bo could not remain out in the wild. Um, he was learning things so fast, um, and realistically, nothing much would change in that campground about what was going on all summer, and so he'd probably come right back to the same area. So uh, they did decide this had to be a permanent removal for Bo. Um, luckily, we did have an opening there, which is rare for us to have a spot open for an additional grizzly, but he did arrive here in July. Uh, after he had been started coming out on his own last October, so a year ago, he met Seely and Condi, the other two bears out there. Seely and Condi arrived to us in September of 2019 as Cubs of the Year, as we call it, so they're only about seven or eight months old. They're from an area more north in Montana, um, a little bit south of Glacier National Park, uh, in an area called the Swan Valley near Seely Lake and the town of Condon, that's where they get their names. Uh, but these two actually, uh, even though they were removed in September. Um, all summer long, they had been getting into a lot of different food sources with their mom. But the first time anything had ever been reported to the bear managers was when their mom had broken into a locked storage door on a, a shed full of grain for horses. And so uh, that uh, landowner had issued a report. They went, trapped the family group, and were hoping that was their first time doing anything and they could just relocate them. But they thought that was kind of weird for a mom to do for her first time ever going near people. So they started um, doing a little bit of detective work. They started going around door to door. Um, Mm -hmm. 
does decide to charge, which again, usually only does if there are cubs nearby or that food source nearby, um, or sometimes in the case of a surprise encounter, um, if that bear charges, that uh, is when you want to deploy bear spray, and again, the only time you want to deploy bear spray. Uh, again, it's really powerful stuff. It goes out. Um, this can that I have here is just an example one. It has the propellant in it, does not have the active ingredient in it. So it's kind of a demo for how it works. I'm just going to wait till the wind figures out a direction, and then I'm just going to spray it if you guys want to see how that works. All right, so the real stuff, again, is going to go out a little further, hang out a little longer. It's oil-based. This stuff just has that propellant, so if you get a whiff of it, it's mostly just like hairspray smelling things. Um, but again, you just want to hold it down. Um, you want to aim it towards the ground, not like this, like a person's running at you. Um, bears, if they're charging, their head is low to the ground. So that's kind of what you want to think of, is don't aim it down at your feet, don't aim it like this. Just that kind of gentle slope downward. And then this uh, particular brand of bear spray, I know when it's full, has seven seconds of spray in it. What that tells me is I only need to use about two. It's designed to give you more than you should need to use. So in this case, I'm just going to hold it down for about two seconds. All right, and it goes. Again, it comes out. The real stuff goes out further. I'm just not going to use the real stuff when all of us are around. No one's going to want to be here for like a week. But you want to um, spray that. You have more just in case. So if something happens where you miscalculate, you misfire, 
you have more just in case. So if that bear goes under, around, whatever, you can get it again just right in the face. Um, again, it has plenty in there. Or if you hiked in and now have a hike back to make out, um, you can rest assured that you have enough to deal with that. But every time you go out, though, you want to go out with a full canister. Don't go out with a half empty one just in case. Um, so again, uh, being aware is the best thing you can do. Uh, when you see bears, giving them their space, if you know that bear's there, does anyone know how far away you need to stay from a bear? In the park, they sit 100 yards, exactly. To give you an idea of that, that is the distance from that boulder out in the bear habitat over there to the pillars of that museum entrance. And a grizzly bear can actually run that distance in about seven seconds. So 100 yards is a minimum. Feel free to stay further, but the closer you get, if you're making that choice to get closer to that bear, just start taking away seconds that you have to react. You want to be able to react, again, if you have to deploy bear spray or whatever that reaction is going to be. Um, if you guys take one thing from this quick talk though, it's that do not run. Never ever run from a bear. You will not outrun it. They can run really fast like we just talked about, but running can often trigger a chase response. So the best thing you want to do is hold your ground, again, talk calmly, use bear spray if they charge. If you're the one in the group who doesn't carry it and is at the front, drop to the ground, cover your neck, um, just kind of protect your vital organs, don't scream, don't yell. The bear's probably going to mess around, try to figure out what's going on, lift your backpack up a little bit. Um, wait until that bear has left and has been gone for about 15-20 minutes until you get back up. If you just get right back up, it probably would still be as a threat, come on out. So again, that's why we always recommend with bear spray, it's something you don't have to think about, you don't have to wait that 15-20 minutes after a bear makes contact with you to get back up. This is something that will work time and time again. Uh, if anyone has any questions about getting bear spray, if that's something that you are now uh, now realize that you should have as you're out and about in bear country. Uh, just let me know. There's places to buy it. We sell it at cost. We just really want people to have it. Um, there's also options for renting if you're flying uh, in or out because uh, you cannot take this on airplanes. So renting is often a better option for that. Uh, but again, any questions, let me know. Uh, but really quick, I'll introduce uh, the next bears that'll be on their way out. So again, our keeper was just out there hiding food, and now that she's left, we have the gate open in the middle part of the habitat, and we'll be inviting Seely, Condi, and Bo to come on out. Um, Bo will be the biggest of the three. He is uh, an approximately five-year-old male grizzly, and then Seely and Condi are about two and a half-year-old females, they're sisters. Uh, these are our three newest arrival bears. Um, Bo arrived last year, July of 2020, Celia and Condi arrived in September of 2019, so they've been here a little over two years. These three bears met each other last October and have been getting along very well ever since. You might see them interact, you might just see them focused on food. What they decide to do out here is completely up to them. So that first brat was Bo. Um, he's followed by, I believe, Condi. The sisters are starting to grow in their winter coats. So they're getting a little tricky to tell apart um, until you see both of their faces. Condi has a slightly more blonde face. So that actually might be Celia. We'll see. No, that's Seely next. So that was Condi, and then followed by Seely. Uh, and so again, they're out here using their incredible sense of smell, which uh, is capable of reaching upwards of 15 miles away on a good day um, to figure out exactly where that food is hidden. They can also use the ravens as a clue. The ravens saw the food being hidden, and they um, it's in their interest to try to get the bears over to it as soon as possible. So they can use their muscles and claws to get access to the food, and then the ravens are hoping for some leftovers. Uh, and then. As they, again, are foraging around, uh, again, however they'd like to search around for that, uh, they're welcome to. The goal is just getting them to be as active as they'd like to be um, and show off that natural foraging behavior that bears have. This should be how bears find most of their food out in the wild, searching around on the ground using those claws and muscles. But every so often, bears find access to food in a slightly different way. Um, and that is unfortunately why most of the bears that live here at the center are here, is because they were removed from the wild due to conflicts with people involving um, unsecured human food sources. So things like garbage, pet food, bird feeders, whether it's uh, seeds and nuts, or a uh, sugar water and a hummingbird feeder. Those are all delicious attractants for them. Uh, it can be things in the campgrounds, like a cook camp stove that has just a little bit of the drippings from the dinner that you cooked last. Uh, it can have a toothbrush, deodorants, toiletries in your tent. Uh, something as simple, too, as just the knife you use to make a sandwich left out on the picnic table. With that sense of smell they have, they are definitely capable of figuring out what's risky and what's not. And if they decide that, hey, it's the middle of the night or the middle of the day, there's not too many people around um, in that campground, let me head right in. And they take a risk and get that food reward. Uh, they will remember that for the rest of their life. No matter how much time passes or how far away that bear has moved from that area, 
they will always have that strong memory of easy food, and they're very likely to come back to that same area again and again. And every time we see them return, we see a little bit of a change behavior with them. We see that bear taking bigger risks, acting a bit more bold. And at some point, it gets to uh, the point where that bear, those bear managers out there have to figure out when they need to permanently remove that bear from the wild. Um, most of the time, that permanent removal is a lethal removal. Every so often, captivity can be an option. It just strongly depends on space available, and most years there is not space available in captivity, especially for the sheer amount of bears that are removed for these exact same stories. So with these three, again, Bo is our most local bear. Uh, Bo in the middle right now. He was removed from Rainbow Point Campground, which is about eight miles up the road from where we are right now. Uh, last 4th of July weekend, he was a very active bear in that campground and in some uh, short-term rental areas nearby where people had just been leaving things out, namely garbage, but also cases of drinks in the back of their trucks. Um, Bo had started just increasing his behavior, acting more bold um, over a very short amount of time. He started to come in and topple tents, luckily unoccupied tents, in search of food. He uh, fell asleep on top of someone's car while they were also sleeping inside of it. So that is not normally something that we would see a bear do, but Bo was learning very quickly that it was not a big problem to be in an area surrounded by so many people. Um, especially as we're seeing more and more people recreating in bear country. This summer, last summer, both have set records for how many people are visiting this area, how many people are camping in this area. Um, and last year, without taking any of the warnings very seriously, that is what resulted in the removal of not just Bo, but many bears in this area. Uh, and so when Bo arrived here, we were estimating he was about four years old. Um, so we thought he'd be a good candidate to meet Celia and Condi, who had arrived in September of 2019 as what we call Cubs of the Year. They're about seven or eight months old when they first got here. Uh, the first time the bear managers had heard about Celia or Condi was when um, in September someone called in and said a mom and her cubs had broken into his uh, storage shed full of grain uh, that had a locked door. And so they uh, went to the scene, set a trap for the family group, uh, did trap the mom and two of the cubs and realized, uh, okay, we have them, let's see what they've been doing. If this is their first time getting into food, usually relocation can work. Um, but they were kind of guessing it wasn't her first time based on how bold of a move uh, she did getting into that grain storage shed. So they went door to door to see if anyone in that neighborhood had seen this mom or cubs, and it turns out, yeah, a lot of people had. All summer long, that mom had been getting into almost everything a bear could access in a neighborhood, including garbage, bird feeders, pet food, chicken coops, uh, not just the chickens themselves, but the food stored for chickens. Again, grain, really easy, good calories. Um, she at one point stuck her head into someone's kitchen window and then attempted to break into two more. And this was happening throughout the summer, but no one was reporting anything. So by the time that they did have her trapped, they realized this is not her first time. This is maybe her 15th through 20th time getting access to food. Um, she cannot be out in the wild any longer. So they made one of their least favorite decisions, which was to euthanize their mom. So at that point, Celia and Condi were only about seven, eight months old, which is too young to be out there without their mom. Normally they'd stick around until they're two and a half or three and a half. But at this point too, all Celia and Condi had learned out in the wild was that neighborhoods were the place to be. That is how you got food. Not only would they not realistically know how to find those foods in the wild, but this is what they'd probably do for the rest of their life. And as they got bigger, got more bold, um, the only uh, outcome of that was that dangerous encounter. So they did remove Ceiling Condi uh, here at the center for the first time in about eight years. We did have two open dens, so Ceiling Condi arrived here. Uh, and again, are now getting to be full grown. At two and a half, they're still kind of what we consider cubs. Not yet sub-adults, Bo is almost an adult. By the age of six is when we would consider them to be adults. As you're watching them out here, again, you're noticing that foraging for food, which is a really important thing for bears 